What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo. Joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, what did we say? What have we been saying? What have you been saying for years? The news just continues to prove us correct yet again. Man, I'm tired of being right. Hey, this is like, this though, this time around, this is like our like Infinity War Endgame, I feel like. Because there's like five or six storylines that we've been on for a couple years that have all just come to a head. Yeah. In the, in the last 24 <laughs> hours. And it's like, we just go down the list like, oh, we got all six stones and we're about to, you know. Yo. Actually, James Gunn is the one who might be doing oh, this. Oh, yeah. Snap. Oh, definitely. And, and Brian... When I hear the moves that he's making, by, by the way, you were absolutely right. James Gunn, he is that he's he's great at the social media thing. He, he he's really keeping the, the fans in, engaged and really excited for whatever it is that they're gonna do. And the smart thing that he's doing is keeping it quiet. He's not giving you nothing. And I think and I hope he stays doing that until it's time for a revelation. But one of the rumors. Brian is that he is looking to reboot the whole universe and obviously not touch the Matt Reeves, the the Joker. Um, and who knows, Brian, who knows if Superman is one of them that he decides to do with Henry Cavill, like a three movie deal. I don't know yet. It's looking unlikely, but let's see. What are your thoughts on what's going on so far? <laughs> As the DC world turns, so let, let's try to, let's. there's really three big stories that have come out in the last 24 hours. Hollywood Reporter had one, um, Deadline had one specific to uh, Wonder Woman, and then, you know, our, our good friend Dwayne Johnson had to toss his hat back in the ring on something else that we have to talk about, but he's also at the epicenter of this. So let's, where to start? Hollywood Reporter. This is the big one. Really, mm -hmm. this takes five or six shows that you and I have done about. We've called it at points as the DC world turns. We've called it at <laughs> points like WTF is going on. Like, <laughs> well, I think we kind of have our answer, at least the framework of an answer, mm -hmm. which is that James Gunn and Peter Saffron, according to the Hollywood Reporter, are in the final quote, in the final stages of prepping their multi-year plan ahead of next week's pivotal presentation to Warner Brothers CEO David Zaslav. So this is it, the Bible. They're coming strong with their vision for what the DCU should be. And it sounds like they they have the authority to call the shots. We, we, we might be getting our answer. That's so like all these people that have competing interests and cooks in the kitchen, all the things we've alluded to, it sounds like David Zaslav is going to give these two guys the keys and roll with what they're recommending. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. All right, Pablo, let's back it way up. There's okay. one and just take it high level. One fundamental thing that stands out to me here is something you and I have been scratching our heads about as Warner Brothers has gone through this transition, which is how can you end the Snyderverse when you continue to employ the Snyderverse characters? It's just a fundamental conflict of interest, it seems. Sounds like James Gunn sees it as you and I see it, which is it may not make everyone happy, but the only way forward is to wipe everybody off the board who was associated with that enterprise. I, I don't know how you read this article, but I read this article as regardless of the pain it might entail and the feathers we might ruffle, we are looking to usher out all of the Snyderverse interpretations of characters in DC Universe that we've got. Not necessarily the actors, we'll get to that in a second, but the characters as you've seen them, known them, had them portrayed, they will not be moving forward in any capacity in the DCU. What do you think about that? He specifically says these, these decisions might ruffle some feathers. He's talking to 
Snyderverse fans, I I, I believe. I believe they're, the, they're the most vocal ones. And I believe those Snyderverse uh, fans uh, want DC to succeed. Um, and I'm pretty sure they know by now that Snyder is not coming back. At least I hope not, because I would be crazy. No, no, that, but, yeah, 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 yeah. But he realizes what you and I have realized, Brian, that this cannot continue. We've already gotten word by Wonder Woman, not happen. We'll talk about that a little later with with Patty Jenkins. The news is hopeful, Brian. This is the sort of news that I think we were hoping to get quite some time ago, but it felt like WB was just holding on and felt the pressure of the fans and didn't, these these executives didn't know quite what to do. James Gunn came there and said, we're doing this and, and Saffron, we're doing this. And I like what he's said so far, Brian. I agree. Rapid That's fire. Mm -hmm. Here's the just rapid fire. What's in the Hollywood Reporter article? So, no Wonder Woman three in its current iteration. Uh, so Gal Gadot in limbo at best. Patty Jenkins out. We'll get to that story more because there's more layers to that. Henry Cavill Superman at best in limbo. Sounds like it's tending toward a no. Aquaman done after Done. Aquaman 2 and the only reason Aquaman 2 is going is because the movie's finished and in post-production they're too far along to not release it we know that movie's undergoing major changes yeah but Jason Momoa Done. still will be part of the DCU sounds like they want but not as Aquaman actually sounds like he's being moved into a role which is better for him we'll talk about it this is a good move I think oh, of course um also notable the cameos. I thought this was a really big piece of this article. Cameos shot by Henry Cavill. Cameos shot by Ben Affleck. Being edited and removed out of Flash and Aquaman 2. Wow. No cameos involving those. Ca those cameos supposedly being taken out entirely because the, the article says they do not want to mislead fans with brief appearances by characters that the studio has no intention of taking anywhere. Thank you. What took so long? But yeah. And then that then leads to, speaking of cameos and Henry Cavill, no Black Adam 2. This is a definite no Black Adam 2? Says unlikely at present. I want to hear it, Brian. I want to hear it from James Gunn. I want to hear it from Saslov. I want to hear from WB. Black Adam 2 will not be done. Why? We'll get to that later. So that's the rapid fire of the Hollywood Reporter article. Now, to your point, James Gunn on social media, because this is why, this is why, and we talk about it, this is why James Gunn is useful. Comes on and responds to the article. Somewhat cryptic, but gives mm -hmm. you information. Tells you some of the article is true. Tells you some of the article's not true. I think we now know at least one of the things that's not true. It's the one, the Wonder Woman story is not all about James Gunn, which the Hollywood Reporter article made it seem like. And then he said, there's some things which may be true, but we're still talking about. And I think you and I have hit on it and we'll talk about here of what we can guess a few of those might be. So James Gunn is already telling you this article is not BS. He's telling you there's real content in here that is going to become reality. And then he says, we cannot make everyone happy, but we have to do what's right so that we can move the characters along and be true to the stories and the characters that people have loved all their lives. There should be music. I'm going to put some music behind <laughs> what you've been saying, Brian. Because that's music to my ears. Continue. And then he says, James Gunn, here's a quote. Peter and I, th th this one I think is a very carefully worded and telling statement. Peter and I, I mean, Peter Saffron and I chose to helm DC Studios knowing we were coming into a fractious environment. I mean, we've taught, we've called WB a studio in disarray for how long? I mean, here's, here's the head of the studio owning that right to yeah. you. Now, listen, fractious environment, both in the stories being told 
And take note, Snyderverse fans, in the audience itself, I mean, that is literally saying there's the Snyderverse camp and the non Snyder. He's literally calling that out. Yeah. And continuing the quote, there would be an unavoidable transition period as we moved into telling a cohesive story across film, TV, animation, and yeah. game. But in the end, the drawbacks of that transitional period were dwarfed by the creative possibilities and the opportunity to build upon what has worked in DC so far and rectify what has not. <laughs> we know we are not going to make every single person happy every step of the way, but we can promise everything we do is in the service of the capital letters story and in the service of the capital letters characters we know you cherish and we have cherished our whole lives. I mean, that's it. He's laying it down beautifully said that's why speaking and writing is always better <laughs> because you get to say what you really rethink it and and i'm pretty sure that's what he's doing and what he's done and brian this is music to my ears man this is what we've been saying for the longest brian for the this, longest we've been saying this this also to me underscores how much worse they made things in the past 18 months where they were, the merger was coming. And we talked about this. Everybody was trying to get theirs. The prior regime was throwing all this product up. They were trying to make HBO Max this big thing. And they were, they created so much more pain in the transition yeah. by putting all this stuff out, by having, you know, quite honestly, we got we to throw some shade, I think, at Michael DeLuca because he's, he's definitely been kind of like operating as, and not totally his fault, but like, He's been kind of making his own calls in the interim period, like the Cavill appearance in Black Adam. And like that's creating a layer of confusion now where like they're having to unwind some of those like interim decisions, which we talked about when they were trying to find their Kevin Feige. We're like, why are they making so many decisions on these characters when the person mm -hmm. who's supposedly going to run the show is not even hired yet? Yeah. And now you see the guys who actually get the job are like, Boy, this is going to hurt some people, but we just got to, we got to cut it off. Brian, it is the, 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 the way I see things going, Brian, is that the excitement is going to build up and James Gunn is going to provide that excitement, that, 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 that intensity when Comic-Con next year is going to possibly be one of one for the history books, I think, and uh, one of the most memorable, perhaps if he's ready to divulge huge information. Uh, about what they're trying to do in 2024. Let's kind of go through a couple of the pieces then. The other big thing that's been percolating around is, is Wonder Woman 3. So now, Wonder Woman 3 got put in this article and portrayed as if James Gunn and Peter Saffron had axed Wonder Woman 3. That became the headline. Yeah, yeah. It would appear that's not true. And I think this story, again... If you guys go back to when we broke down Wonder Woman 84 and the aftermath of that, we told you at the time, we were very skeptical that Patty Jenkins was going to do Wonder Woman 3. Even if they did Wonder Woman 3, which they green lit, yeah. we were skeptical that she that would direct. Yeah. And guess what happened? <laughs> like, you know what happened? <laughs> Thor Dark World happened again. See, yeah. Patty Jenkins is really talented, but Patty Jenkins... She don't share, man. She man. she is an artiste. Like you either buy what she's selling, or, or, or she's out. Yeah, yeah. So the report that came out after the Hollywood Reporter article from Deadline said she pitched. This is interesting. She pitched Deluca, not Gun and Saffron. She pitched Deluca the Wonder Woman three script, yeah. and he said this does not work. He then went to Gunn, reportedly, for his input. And Gunn said, I agree, this does not work. So they went back to Patty and said, rewrite this and give us a new pitch on the character. To which Patty Jenkins reportedly said no, and then sent them a Wikipedia link to the words character arc. And then proceeded to say, if you don't want to let me tell this exactly the way I want to tell it, I'm going to leave and go direct something. Bye. Else. To which you and I say, that's fine. 
And the report well in the article says that her treatment for Wonder Woman 3, if you believe this, I think is a little bit of studio propaganda. Mm-hmm. Her, her treatment for Wonder Woman 3 basically built on the flaws of Wonder Woman 84, which was a pretty flawed movie. It was an atrocity, I think. But hey, Brian, this just goes to show we sort of talked, we, again, we talked about this in the past, that after Woman of Woman 84, how do you make some, how do you do a, a third one? Considering how bad this was received. Certainly, we can, you can sort of blame date and date releases and stuff like that, but this movie, I, it got killed by critics got killed by fans this movie was going to be a disaster for her there was no way one uh, a third wonder woman was going to ever get made yeah i think even if we had a a full-on box office you would have seen a nice healthy drop off it would have been profitable but i think you would have you know the first one was about 800 million this one probably would have been like six five to six that's kind of where it might have topped out but here's the other thing the article said you know and i don't think it's a i don't think it's a nothing um had they gone ahead with Wonder Woman 3 in its current form, you know, Gal Gadot was guaranteed 20 million up front. Yeah. Patty Jenkins guaranteed 12. I mean, that's $32 million for your star and your director. And if you don't like your script, I mean, studios, you, you know, it's going to be heads. It's in. over. It's over. It's over. But they made the right decision. The decision was, Brian, to tell her that this is not going to work. No, it is the right decision. The right decision is if you don't believe in the script, you don't green light the project. Like, yeah. that is the right decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like you put it back on the creator to work with the studio. If the creator doesn't want to do that, again, it's like this to me is very similar to our discussions about Superman. This idea that like there's no other way with Wonder Woman, there's no other form without Patty. Don't tell me that yeah. Wonder Woman eighty four is not a class. Like you, you can do another Wonder Woman. And it can work with someone else. Yeah. Like yeah. just like we can talk about doing another Superman with someone else, and it can be great. It doesn't have to be Henry Cavill. Could be doesn't have to be the other thing is gal gadot obviously put out this very cryptic tweet about like how excited she was to show people the next i think odds are rising quick like i said i think with this whole they want a clean break i think jenkins jenkins stubbornness or loyalty to her vision is going to make it easier for the studio to not bring back gal as wonder woman it just makes it easier to like basically say all right that's one more snyderverse character we can say goodbye to you. It's going to be very interesting next week when they have this meeting, what sort of uh, information gets uh, divulged uh, by the media, but it's going to be a very exciting uh, time. So you want to do Superman? Because this one, we nailed this. This was like, we, we, we might as well have been in the room for this. Go ahead. So they said, mm-hmm. Cavill wasn't totally lying when he went on Instagram and gave his big I am back tweet tw- did he tweet it on Instagram was it Instagram I thought it was in, I thought it was Instagram posted the video right full, yeah. it was like a full video saying it okay 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 but he did jump a gun uh, no pun intended um <laughs> <laughs> so they said at the time there were plans moving forward there were meetings taking place with writers And interestingly, that Flash director, Andy Muschietti, had said he was excited and willing to direct Cavill in this project. Yeah. But as we suspected, he was never signed. This was never official. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of lends credence to our theory that, like, Camp Rock was kind of pushing this and saying get this get this into the fan base so that they can apply more pressure to seal the deal and when gun and saffron got in the seat which is exactly what we suspected they put the brakes on it immediately and said oh we need to reassess the landscape of how this fits into what we want to do more broadly and then the article i think that to me that's why i said the article to me makes it sound very bad for cavill's prospects because if they are now leaning toward removing him from the flash um, scenes that he shot, it specifically says they don't want to put him in a movie if they have no intention of going forward with him in any capacity, which then circles you back to 
the scene he did in Black Adam, which would go nowhere, which the studio is not happy about, which then circles you back to the article specifically says the studio, which I would interpret to mean Gunn, Saffron, and Zasloff at this point, are not happy with Dwayne Johnson for constantly talking about being responsible for Henry Cavill's return and his plans for his future in DC, which is exactly what was, <laughs> was going on. <laughs> Listen, man, if you're not watching a Nerd Jet Report, you don't know what's going on, really. <laughs> you're just reading headlines and like, oh, this is happening, but you don't know what's really happening. Brian, I am glad that they are speaking up, and I'm pretty sure The Rock is not happy about the pushback, because I'm pretty sure he's used to getting what he wants. And I'm interested to see the next couple of months, I'll say, uh, depending on what James Gunn and Peter Saffron have in store for us as far as news and developments uh, of the future of the DC, DCU. Uh, what The Rock will say to his fans when and if, because who knows if this if The Rock decides to sit down with James Gunn and Peter Saffron, who might take a meeting with with The Rock. The studio is clearly going to give him an avenue to return knowing that he will not take it. Yeah. James Gunn, the Bible, the vision, is going to have room for Black Adam. Yeah, of course. To be part of, of course. a collective. Of course. And they will go to The Rock and they say, listen, if you want to buy in, this can you can be part of something. You can be part of a 10-year journey. You can, you can be, since he apparently he's got Chris Evans on his brain right these days, since he's working with him, you can be like, Chris Evans was to the MCU. But you need to share the way Chris yeah. Evans did and all of the MCU did along the way. And they'll say that knowing that the answer that's going to come back from The Rock is no effing way, yeah. which will make him a hypocrite to his fans because the fans at the end of the day will still want him to be part of this. And this idea that they only want him to be part of it if he's the whole of it is ludicrous. And unfortunately, that's not unfortunately, fortunately, it's not going to happen. Because yeah. what he was trying to do was just make his mark on uh, an IP that has a rich history and transform it into something new, which has been done before, Brian, but not to this extent. Well, that's where he runs into James Gunn's comment about we have cherished these characters our whole lives. Like, I don't know that he was writing that directly at Dwayne Johnson, but there is an implication there of like, when you take Black Adam and then cast Shazam aside and then want to set up this hierarchy of power where you're going to fight the Justice League and you're going to fight the Suicide Squad and you're going to that's where true lovers of the comics and the genre and the history of DC are like, that's not the way it goes, man. You're just, you're just trying to use gravity to pull everything around you. And so the article does say about the Black Adam sequel, which then led to, I, I mean, something that I thought, I, I'm surprised, honestly, that The Rock indulged this. But yeah. you know, it made reference to what we've been talking about, which is the movie's going to lose money. And The Rock responded to that, which blew my mind. I was like, stars of movies do not respond to <laughs> debates about the box office success of their projects. This movie's profitable. It made a million dollars in profit. Like, he went out there to basically say, like, oh, I had to check with the financiers, but it's like we're going to make about $50 million on this. And I'm like, bro, what are you talking about, man? First off, that's like pennies in the grand scheme of things. It's 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 ridiculous, Brian, that he's responding, and it's like people have their 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 their, their opinions, Brian, and the majority are saying your movie was whack. Only the people that 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 are fans of yours came to see that movie, and if you went to see this movie more than three or four times, you got a hookup at the movie theater. <laughs> 
Um, That's it. Also, I mean, and then in his his defense, first off, it's not true. Sorry. Yeah, I, it, it it's isn't not true. true. Even John Campion said it wasn't true. It's, it's just not true. The numbers are not true. I mean, if, if you want to go, but here's the two things that I thought in his defense were hilarious to me is one, he tried to include merchandising. Bro, I'm out, man. Are you taking the creases of the seats in the movie theaters too? Well, to which I felt like saying, okay, if I'm going to indulge this crap for a second, do you want me to give you the estimated box office of Star Wars if I include merchandise? It's going to be a number you can't imagine. One hundred billion dollars. Let's go back. In fact, because he threw shade at Captain America First Avenger because he said a movie that was made. I mean, not that there's been any inflation in the last couple of years, but that a movie that's been made over 10 years ago, he's like, oh, I made a little bit more than that movie did. And that movie launched the fret. Uh, you want to throw in all the toys and Legos and games and shirts and shields that Cap has sold and see what that number looks like in today's dollars? Hey, we, we if you would have listened to our shows, we would have told you you were going to lose. <laughs> we and, knew and this you- movie was going to lose. And you lost, and you lost in part because the studio gave you a budget that was too big, right? Like that—that's the core issue. It's like every movie, like movies of three hundred million, four hundred million a box can work, but they got to be budgeted properly. This movie was budgeted to be a six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred million dollar property. It was not. Therefore, it is a disappointment. Those are the facts. Like we're not saying that because it's the Rock. We're saying that because that's the truth. You know somebody when you see the BS and you know they tell they're full of it and and and, and you know the truth and he's selling you lies and and, and 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 building it up and being positive and stuff like that, never really taking any accountability or or even saying, Yeah, that was a even yo, even Eddie Murphy said Pluto Nash was horrendous. <laughs> Come on, man. It's like the more you keep talking, the the worst he's looking out here, yo. And I, I, the fans are going to love him for regardless. That's fine. In the premiere for the Black Adam, everybody's dressed in black. What does The Rock wear? It's frustrating, yo. It's like somebody just like wants the limelight so much. Look, the, the irony of The Rock getting into this petty squabble over the, the break-even point for Black Adam is that like The Rock throughout his career has been a very reliable moneymaker. He actually has generally been a very good judge of like how to budget movies versus what the global demand winds up being. So that makes it all the more weird that like he would even bother to kind of get into this, which makes me think that like, there's just something about this genre and the fan, like what he's encountered here is just a little different than what he gets when he's working on Rampage or San Andreas or Skyscraper. Like it just, it's a little bit of a different audience and a different crowd. And like for, you know, I think in fairness, the stakes are higher because there's more connectivity in theory between any one of these characters to the universe. So, and that's why we get on him here. It's like, and quite honestly, it's like, that's why the MCU hasn't touched his camp. Yeah. Like, and that's why I think James Gunn, like going forward, they realized that, look, like, yes, The Rock is a massive star, but he's not a great collaborator if you're trying to create a unified vision that spans all these media that they're talking about. He's just not. That's not the way he's built his career. And that's fine. He can have his machine and he can go have the projects. I mean, I saw the other day, there's talk of him coming back to be the Scorpion King again in some mummy reboot. And I'm like, what? Really? But that's so rock, right? To like go back to where it all began with with another sequel to another franchise. It's like, really, young? I do think it will wind up being a parting of ways. James Gunn is not as, I don't know what the right word is. He's not Vin Diesel. Like Vin Diesel's messages on social media are very loaded, I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he, based on all accounts, did not exactly cover himself in glory in his feud with The Rock. So I'm not about to say that was The Rock's fault yeah, all, yeah. all in. But I think it will take a similar shape because Gunn is so visible on social media. He will have a statement and a, a take 
on the parting of ways that we think is coming between Dwayne Johnson and the DCU. And I think Dwayne Johnson will have, I mean, we saw his words about Henry Cavill and the studio. I think you will see videos and tweets and Instagrams from The Rock telling his version of how this went down. But at the end of the day, I just don't see a scenario where, where he's working with this 10 year no. plan that they have in any capacity. Listen, a lot of changes are coming to the DC IP and rightfully so it's time for a change. It's like for people out there wishing to keep, there's some people out there. Why don't you oh, it's reboot it, but keep the same characters or, or keep the same actors. Do you guys do not know that people age, that we're human beings? Do you want them to de-age him if that's what you prefer? Spend millions of dollars just to see these same characters? Uh, I, it's just time to move on, guys. It's time to move on. Whether you like it or not, I don't care if you give me a dislike or like. I don't care right now because I know people are going to get angry. But it is what it is. It's time to move on. I'm glad it's happening it's about damn time. So one other thing in the Hollywood Reporter article that I thought was, you know, um, it's weird because we have given James Gunn his share of grief for some of his of creative choices. But man, he may have saved the day on something because the article dropped that not only was Michael DeLuca on board with the Henry Cavill cameo in Black Adam, that he actually wanted to run it back and do a full-on Justice League 2 with the Snyderverse cat. And when I saw that in the article and I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad James Gunn threw his body in front of that and basically was like, that's, because that would have ended the Justice League for a decade if had they done that. And had they done it without Zack Snyder directing those characters, it would have been just an absolute category Mess. five hurricane. It makes you wonder, you're like, yo, who, who do I got working for me, yo? If you're thinking about making that decision, who do I have working in this place that's gonna that think this is a good idea? Talk to me. Because if you think this is a good idea, I don't know if we can work together. If you think this is a good idea and you green lit this to happen, what were you thinking of? I, I don't know. I think that's more the rock. Brian, I think that's more the rock. That could that he, could well he he had them in their movie. <laughs> You're right. They he had them in the, the movie. You're right. That was just a, 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 I, I guess, a preview. That was a preview when he did that in the movie. And that answered for me the thing I kept bringing up to you, which is why are these characters being shown in the trailer for every movie? Remember, they were in the Shazam trailer. They were, and I was like, what's going on here? That's why they were doing it, because they were actually hatching plans to do a Justice League sequel without Zack Snyder, but with the whole cast coming back. Wow, we got spared a potential calamity, I think, by that not happening. You ever seen, Brian, uh, the Scooby-Doo uh, cartoon when they were kids? And it was always the Red Herring's fault or something like that? Uh, this guy, that's The Rock. The Rock is behind all of this. Now, now I got to give you... I got to give you shouts because, and, and something that's actually exciting that came out of this. You caught the Jason Momoa video where he shaved his long hair off, and you immediately texted me and said, He's done. That's awkward. <laughs> and we come, oh. to find, we come to find out he is done as Aquaman, but he's not. This I thought was great news, but on everyone's part. Who is he going to play, Pablo, and why is it perfect? Lobo. Lobo because he is Jason Momoa. In terms of his look, his demeanor, the way he talks to people, he's he's he, he's a, his character is a bounty hunter, right? Yeah. He drives a motorcycle. He's just badass, right? And that's the character that he plays. You don't even have to tell him to act. Just say these lines. And he's, you're going to get a, a good performance. And you're going to get a true performance from the character of Lobo, portrayed by Jason Momoa. And that is what we want. He even cryptically tweeted that thing about the dream project after yeah, he yeah, shaved yeah, his yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. That was Lobo, I, man. See, but that, to me, when I saw that, I was like, that's also Momoa and his camp being smart. 
they see that they see the ship sinking oh, to yeah. Atlantis over here, and they're like, "We got a lifeboat, and we're going to Lobo over there." They started swimming a long time ago, Brian. They started swimming a long time ago. Um, one last thing, Brian. I don't know if we want to get into it now, but I wanted to ask you a question because I was listening to the Campion show today, and. They were talking about how to go about rebooting DC. Some of the suggestions were to A, do it the way, you know, the single movie and then just start moving forward from there or start with Justice League. What are, how would you approach that? I would probably still go single movie, single character. Um, and I would start with Superman again. Uh, younger Superman. See, I got to tell you, it's one thing they treat. I know they've said basically that the Matt Reeves Batverse is sacred ground, but gosh, the way he has set up our Pats in that franchise with where he is in his maturity, his development is kind of antisocial behavior. Man, that could be really, really good alongside the right younger Superman at some point. Just from like a personality contrast. I hear you. I hear you. I, I don't know if Matt Reeves would go for it, but like, I feel like I go, I go young, like I go younger, like maybe not Tom Welling young from the from the TV show, but like younger. Maybe it is time for a true origin story, like, and just you can go back to that. Maybe we can go back to that now. I don't know. You know, right. like Man of Steel did it in flashback form, um, without giving you the full one. I, I don't know, but. I, like I said, I think if it's going to be starting with that, it is going to be somebody who's between the age of 25 and 33 who's going to be Clark Kent. Who was that guy that you mentioned? And I thought and I said, Oh, hey, Jacob hey. Elordi. I mentioned it for Thor. You took a look at him and said, What about Superman? Because he's six foot five and he's Australian, but he's dark hair and he's a he's a pretty big guy. He looks like he looks the part, man. He looks the part. What um, would you do? Would you rather start with Justice League? I think I would start with Justice League, Brian. Okay. We know. Listen, I watched Justice League the Unlimited uh, a few days ago, and I every once in a while I turn it on. And here's the thing: here's the difficulty, but here's the possibilities. For, for the most part, most people know these characters. The Flash, his origin story is. I mean, it's interesting, but I don't think we need to spend 20 minutes on it, right? Well, you're going to get... So the thing is, The Flash is going to have his movie, it would seem, and then they're just going to recast after. That's what it seems like we're headed toward. So you're going to get the groundwork of The Flash. Yeah, it yeah. seems like everyone does agree internally that the Muschietti movie is really good. I heard the other day, the quote I heard was, it's Spider-Man No Way Home good. Okay, I mean that's 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 a pretty high bar, but we know a lot of these characters' origins. To me, Brian is all about the characters themselves and them being who they are as the heroes that they are, and I think we can do a Hyper Clan storyline hmm, okay. with the White Martians. I think we can start with the Justice League. Listen, when I watch Justice League Unlimited, yo, the the dialogue sometimes in there is hilarious. Oh, yeah. I think if you go that route, Brian, this is a completely different route than what, you, you, than, than what MCU did. If you were trying to be a bit different, but still compete. You do a three-part Justice League film. In between them, there's probably single arcs connected to this bigger storyline. There's many that there's a way to do this, Brian. But let's see what James Gunn. I, I've had my issues with with the sort of uh, humor that James Gunn has with some of these films. But he's not. Here's the thing, he's not writing and directing all of this. That that. that okay. So I'm not as worried. I'm not as worried okay. about that because at the end of the day, you you have to think of James. If this is more about who can James Gunn attract in terms of writers and directors as collaborators got it got and it, it is it. about is he gonna write i 
Will he write and direct something along the way? Probably. Like I would say Lobo, there's an outside chance he does that himself. But I don't think he has any intent. It's just too much of a job. He has a four-year deal. He's not going to be, if he starts to write and direct the movie, that's 18 months of the four years on one project. He's got to oversee the universe. So no, I'm not as worried about that. Gotcha. If, If it becomes an issue, it'll be more, does James Gunn, oversee and edit the tone of whoever gets hired and does that become an issue in a way that it never well shouldn't say never that it did sometimes become for kevin feige with the aforementioned patty jenkins edgar wright right that does that stuff start to happen yeah yeah yeah. that we don't know yet if it if most of these reports turn out to be true unless you are a snyder versus diehard this is the best possible outcome you could have gotten from what was an absolute cesspool of just competing interests messy projects incomplete storylines like to to have the gumption to actually say we just have to just take l's fire big names outright and just move on i would not have bet on that happening here so i am at cautiously optimistic that we are going to get a true reset by the end of 20 i mean think about it. like if we have no snyderverse cast other than jason momoa as lobo and we have matt reeves batverse undisturbed as our starting points fantastic that, that's just, and then what's fingers crossed let's hope blue beetle does what we think it can like the little stuff that's still going on but that's as good as we could have hoped for. The stuff that we've heard today, although surprising to many, for me, Brian, it, it was more of a finally. I wasn't shocked by the 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 choice the, the the things that have just happened with Patty Jenkins leaving, or we're not doing. Uh, we might not do. So. With all the news that came out today, I wasn't surprised. The reason why is because there was two things they were going to do: continue down this path. Or do something completely different. I was confident, Brian, that they did not want to continue down that path because it led to nowhere. It did pretty quickly. It did. Yep. And I got I gotta say, you brought this up when we were when we were, we've been discussing the Cavill thing. Boy, you asked the question about him being put in a position to lose. I mean, it's getting awfully close to looking like he's about to lose big time. You met like. What are the odds like compared to six months ago that this guy could be looking at no Witcher, no Superman, no Bond? Ooh. Nothing. That's how you get hanging around with the rock. That's rough. <laughs> man. That is a rough. That is a rough outcome. Yeah, it's like imagine you're Henry Cavill and you're sitting there and you saying, I may not have Superman. I don't have James Bond because they're going to get this dude. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, maybe. I read that that's close to being done. It sounds like he wowed the broccoli, so. Yeah. Um, you decided to go not do the, the Witcher anymore. Liam Hemsworth says thanks. And he runs off. And now you have nothing other than you, they, they, I mean, he is working on some other stuff, but he, there's nothing huge. No, that's the thing. Like, you know, like that's the thing. Like we heard, we heard a report the other day, would he take over as Van Helsing? And I was like, if that's what you come, if you come out of this as the new Van Helsing, I mean, that's a capital L. He's in a bad situation. Listen, man, if it were me, I wouldn't pick up his calls either. Just, you should have been doing what the MCU has been doing all these years, not picking up those calls. Well, that <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, Kevin Feige, he might be, he might be delivering the inbound call to the, the MCU now, like basically saying, whatever you want, I'll do. Cause I need right. to, keep my, I'm just saying like he, Henry Cavill, cause like he needs, fr- he needs French, like, right? Like that's what I'm saying is this is a guy who six months ago could have been, could have, been in three franchises including james bond and superman Mm -hmm. this is like 
career misplay on the highest oh, level. Yeah. yeah. If Henry Cavill sits down with James Gunn and Peter Safran, I think he may get something out of this in terms of a, a, a trilogy of some sort. Possibly. That's the only... You can't do one movie. I agree, but I don't know if he's going to get that. It's tough because you feel for Henry Cavill. You do. I really do feel for him because I know he wants to be Superman. I know he wants that feeling, probably the, the same feeling that Christopher Reed had when everybody looked at him and be like, yo, that's Superman. And 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 in fairness, this article confirms it was close. Like this, this wasn't totally made up. It mm. just wasn't over the goal line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we've talked a lot about uh, the latest stuff, but it is exciting uh, news to hear that we are, without a shadow of a doubt, going in a new direction. And that is the most exciting news. Despite the news of Warner Brothers not going forward with Wonder Woman 3, Black Adam 2 not happening possibly happening most likely not happening thank the lord um superman is, is is just an unfortunate casualty in all this um but i don't care about that much about you know it's unfortunate for these individuals especially for henry cavill because i did want to see him as superman and try to um do a better job under better circumstances for this character but i care about the characters brian I care about Superman, Batman, all those characters being done the right way. And James Gunn is speaking the language that people, especially myself, are receiving loud and clear is that we need to go in a different direction and pay attention to the story and the characters. Because at the end of the day, my friends, that is what counts. Nothing else. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gem Report.